Alrighty. Um, so, obviously, you're 18 years of age, you know right yeah. from wrong, right? Right. Okay. So, you wrap around a newborn inside a trash in bag. In panic. I, I'm, right. I just turned 18. Right, right. It's not like I've been 18 forever. Exactly. But you know, I mean, if somebody were to wrap you inside a trash can and put a tie on it, and you're not able to move... Well, the tie was broke. Like, I, right. could, I would be able to stick my hand in there. What do you think would have happened? What do you mean? So what do you think would have happened? You never notified law enforcement. You never called for EMS. You I never... didn't. And I didn't. I'm still in... What, what exactly, what do you think was going to happen? I don't know. You don't know what would have happened? Well, I mean, obviously I know, but... Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm in a panic. I, I don't... I, there's a baby in front of me. I just... Okay. You never notified your mom? Never. No, you never notified anybody? Nobody. Okay, so... It's not, you know, it's not normal behavior from any reasonable person to do what you did if i'm you what do you know, mean it's not in a panic when i just turned 18. right it still isn't though we're talking about a baby well, i know i know what you mean but like i'm I get what you mean. this is 18 year old alexis avila She's currently being questioned for abandoning her newborn child inside of a dumpster during the blistering cold. What Alexis isn't aware of is the severity of her actions as she unknowingly committed a capital felony, which is punishable of life in prison. Alexis also believes her age will obtain her leniency throughout the entire interrogation. She will soon find out this is far from the case. On January 7, 2022, Hobbs, New Mexico, police would respond to a frantic 911 call made from a group of individuals who claimed they had found a newborn baby inside of a dumpster wrapped in a wet towel and placed inside of a black trash bag. Hello, 911. Yes, uh, we just found a baby in the trash behind the, uh, uh, what is it, uh, damn, I can't think straight, uh, the Hobbs, what is Tampa? Hey, Tampa, where is, where are we at? Where, the mall, Hobbs, Broadway. Behind, behind <laughs> we're behind Hobbs Mall. Okay, I'm showing you 1218 North. Uh, baby, we had just found an infant child. Is it breathing? I'm trust. Yes, ma'am. Okay. In the I'm middle of the mall, behind the mall, the house of a Okay. Is it closed? Thorpe and you. Thorpe and you. Is, does the baby have any clothes on? Yes, it is making noise. Okay. Do you have a blanket? It is a boy. And he is still alive, I believe. He looks pretty good. Okay. Do you have a blanket or something you can wrap him in? Huh? Do you have a blanket or something you can wrap him in? Yes, ma'am. He was in a blanket. Huh? He still got his umbilical cord, she said. Do you, have you covered him in a blanket? He is in a blanket, yes, ma'am. Okay. Is he crying? He, he's whimpering. He was not crying, actually. Okay. Did you see anyone in the area? No, ma'am. Okay. Anyone else there with you? Uh, hold on. I'll let you talk to the man that has on the phone. Hold on. Okay. Oh, uh, hello? Oh, uh, uh, hello? Hello? Did you find the baby? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I do a bit. Uh, he told you he can hurry. The baby is too small baby here. Let's see okay. hey, uh, will, will you... In Thorpe, right in the corner, yes, in Thorpe. Thorpe. and yes. behind the uh, floor right here, uh, we have the, the, the first cafeteria. We we in the back. Behind the first cafeteria. Yes, ma'am. Did you find the baby? Yes, ma'am. I was oh. looking for some stuff in the and the and the and the and the, and the dumpster, and uh, we heard like a, I mean we, we heard something. You know, I I thought it was a baby, so I thought it was a baby cat. 
Mm-hmm. We dig in and dig in, and then we find the real baby. Okay, can you tell me how he's doing right now? I need to know about the baby. Uh, 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 okay, I see with my my girl. Uh, uh, I mean, he's in the truck. He's in the truck with your girlfriend? Yes. What kind of truck? It's a Jim C. Uh, Jim C. Uh, Sierra. What color? I'm right here. I'm I'm right here behind uh, the first cemetery. Okay. Can you go? I need to know if the baby's breathing. Yes, I do. Okay, is I he crying? Is, uh, I okay, hurry up. I get the okay, officers and it? the medics are on the way, okay? Another dispatcher already has them on the way. My questions are just for them before they arrive. Oh, okay. Hello? Hello? Hello, yes, ma'am. Can you tell me about the baby? Um, he still got his available cord and he's freezing cold and he's barely like he's very like he's very, very, very weak. Okay. Yeah. Do you have him wrapped in a blanket and the heater on? Um, I got him in my in, in my jacket. But he was I took that like that wet um a uh, towel that was wearing them off of them. There, 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 there. There are the cops. We got them. Okay, you got the cops? Yes, ma'am. And you said he was wrapped in a towel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we heard something. And, and, and they said it was some dog. Okay, I'm going to let you go sing speak to the officer, okay? Huh? I'm going to let you go sing speak to the officer. Bye. Bye. Police arrived on scene less than eight minutes later, where they were able to administrate the proper care and treatment the infant needed in order to make a full recovery. Where's the baby? Keep him, keep him warm, keep him covered up, keep him warm. Do you know whose baby it is? Is it your baby? No. April, is it your baby? No. No, it's not. Let me see. Okay. Oh my God. So we're, who found him? Where? Me and him. They heard him. He heard it first, and I. And, and then I we opened just kinda, the bag, and I. I picked yeah, him I said. Up. When we found one of the boxes, uh, we heard that. What'd you hear? Yeah, like uh, I thought it was a little kitten. According to Dr. Thomas Bowman, the child seemed to be suffering from hypothermia, anemia, severe dehydration, and bradycardia. When questioning the group about their finding, the group stated they were dumpster diving before making their startling discovery. And they said they kept hearing a, a whimpering noise. And then um, I said, let me see. Okay, obviously she's a female, but I don't know if um, she's not acting, you know, as if she was the one that threw them in here and stuff. After briefly questioning the group's alibi, police would then acquire DNA samples of each individual for future analysis if needed. Uncertain how the infant ended up in the dumpster, police would request and obtain video surveillance footage from the Broadmoor Shopping Center Mall, where the footage revealed a possible suspect discarding a black trash bag into the same dumpster earlier that day. The woman in the surveillance footage was identified as 18-year-old Alexis Avila, a high school student and a part-time worker. Police would identify Alexis's vehicle and issue a search warrant at her residence. Alexis eventually agreed to speak with police on the matter, and she was taken into custody and questioned by the lead detective on the case, Daniel Perez. In the beginning of this interrogation, Alexis is seated in the corner of the room. A common tactic instructed by detectives in order to make a suspect feel entrapped, leaving them more inclined to cooperate. With Alexis, this is no exception. 
Before she has read or writes, the detective makes sure Alexis is fully cognitive, coherent, and able to proceed with the line of questions, granted that she had just given birth by herself earlier that day. Thank you. Sorry. I don't know where I'm Daniel Pez. I'm an investigator here with the Hospital Police Department. All right. What is your name? Alexis. Alexis. What is your full name? Alexis and Nicole Avila. Okay. What's your date of birth? So before I do ask you any questions, okay? Um, I do posse per policy and procedure. I read every breather rights. It doesn't mean anything other than me you know, making you aware of your rights and you understanding your rights. Does that make any sense? Okay. Do you need any medical attention though before we start? No? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. You know what day of the week it is and stuff? Friday. Today? Friday? Okay. So third bulletin, so I'm going to read you each bulletin. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me at any point, okay? So of course, you have the right to remain silent. You do not have to say anything at all. And anything you do say can be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that part? All right. Second bullet. Detective Perez now begins to read Alexis her rights. Since Alexis just turned 18, she is now required under New Mexico state law to be trialed and prosecuted as an adult. Alexis decides to waive her rights and agrees to speak with the detective on the matter. The interrogation commences with an empathic introduction that can be interpreted in two different ways. And what else do I do? Um, if you wish to talk to me or not, if you can just initial yes or no. Okay. Okay. Right, so I know there's... There's a lot, okay, to talk about, and I just want to ask you, you know, why you think you're here, or what led us to us being here, right? Obviously, I do know information, and the last thing I want to do is, you know, to start up on the wrong foot, and for you yeah. to start, you know, lying. Yeah. There's always two sides to the story. Obviously, I'm looking at a evidence standpoint, what we, what we were called out to. There's, I don't know what you're going through, if you're going through anything, we're all humans, you know, before me being a detective, I'm, I'm a father, you know, I'm, 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 you know, son, and stuff like that, we're all human, it doesn't matter what rank we have or how old we are, all right, and that's why, you know, I asked you to come out here and give me your, your side of the story, okay, I'm not here to judge you, I'm not here to question you, I'm not here to accuse you, I'm not here to, you know, belittle you, that's not what I do, that's not my job. So my job is to investigate, and that's exactly what I'm doing. All right. So um, if you can, I would kindly ask you just to tell me the truth, and we'll go from there, okay? The detective states not only is he an officer of the law, but a son and a father. This single-handedly played a role in the outcome of this interrogation. As we will soon witness, the detective begin to get frustrated with Alexis's answers. So you want to tell me what's going on or what happened today? Or what led to this? Or, uh, I don't... I mean, I can tell you, but I need you to ask because then I can't tell you because I don't... Right. <laughs> okay. So, um, obviously I got confirmation that you, you were pregnant, okay? Right. Right. I, I, I found that out yesterday. You found that out yesterday? Yesterday. Okay. So, tell me a little bit more about that. What do you, what do you like? Um... So how is it that you found out, or how? Well, I've been having back pain, like, really bad, and I got in an accident September of 2021, okay. or two, two years ago. And um, I just thought that's what it was. And, mm -hmm. I mean, the pain comes and goes, and so I didn't really think anything much of it. Um, and it just kept hurting, and so we, my mom took me to the ER, and they just said that I had 
some kind of spray, and I don't even know what kind it was. Mm -hmm. And they just gave me medicine for it, and it wasn't helping. Okay. But I still didn't think anything much of it. Um, I gave them my urine sample and see for infection or anything. Mm -hmm. I, there was nothing, I guess, I don't know. And then um, I just kept hurting, and so I went to the clinic, and they did a urine sample, and they told me I was pregnant, and that's when I found out. You said it was yesterday? Yesterday. And where did you go? What clinic? What uh, the one on Del Paso. Del Paso? Okay. Which one? Lee? Yeah, that one. Okay. The one under construction. All right. Who took you? Myself. My parents were at work. Your parents were at work? Yeah. Okay. So I believe your mom said that she had accompanied you or she took you or she went with you? No, she didn't. Okay. I went by myself. All right. Prior to this interrogation, the detective has already questioned close friends and family members ready to confirm or disprove Alexis's alibi. The detective claims that Alexis had prior knowledge of her being pregnant and isn't as spontaneous as she proclaims. This specific part of the interrogation will serve as a pivotal moment during trial as the defense manages to disprove the authenticity of the detective's statement. This information you said you gathered from somebody, right? Yes, ma'am. Somebody else had told you that. Correct. Maybe a kid from school or something? No, not a kid from school? No. Um, a family member of a kid from school? Yeah, no, it was, a, it was an officer who had informed me of, of that information. Where did the officer get that information from? Uh, from the hospital staff member. Where did they get that information? That same night. Where did they get that information? Uh, who she spoke with, I do not know. You do not know? I don't. Uh, you've never attempted to find out? Where that information came from? Um, after realizing, as you just stated, as to when she would have found out she was pregnant, it was not pertinent for me to uh, follow that lead. So you knew that information was wrong? Um, after I did the math, yes. Okay. Though, the detective believes his information to be correct. He continues the interrogation and reminds Alexis to always stay truthful. So, as I mentioned to you before anything, I... I I like to speak, you know, with the truth, <coughs> obviously, okay, I spoke to some people and I, I know that back in March, you know, is when you spoke to some people and you told them that you were pregnant, so you had prior knowledge, all right, so I'm not going to... Back in March? Right, you know, no, somebody I by the name of Walker, do you know anybody, a friend of yours, a school friend of yours Walker. that I spoke with and... She's the one that told me that you knew that you were pregnant. Walker. I don't and know that you Walker. did not want the child. Walker. Mm -hmm. Her mom is a nurse at, a, at the hospital. Walker. I She's don't know a friend Walker. of yours. You don't know anybody by that name? No. No? Not a Walker. Okay. Well, that's her mom's last name. But I spoke with her, and she's the one that told me, obviously, that you knew or had prior knowledge. Walker. All right. Like I said, if you gotta be straightforward. I don't know, I, don't know. Okay. I swear I don't know a walker. Okay. So anyway, explain to me as far as what happened today. How did your day start today? The same as any other day. Well for the past couple of days. Okay. Um it I was in pain. I just thought I was uh what is it called? I think I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I know there's a um, lot. I, I, I understand there's a lot going on. Where you can't poop. Okay. Constipation? Yeah. yeah I just thought that's what it was. <coughs> okay. Oh, so you... Literally whole day and I would go to sleep and then go back to the restroom and go to sleep and go back to the restroom. Mm -hmm. Just the same thing. Okay. So what time did you, your day start? I don't even, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. Okay. So you don't know what time you woke up, or do you, are you working, do you go to school? I, I go to school, but I didn't go, I haven't been to school this week. Yeah, And I didn't have work today. Okay. Where are you working at? Martinville. Okay. So you haven't been going to school this whole week? No. No? Because you've been sick, or? Yeah. Okay. So you don't know what time you woke up. Obviously a lot happened, okay? Right. So I just yeah, wanted no, to get I, a time frame uh, as far as. I wouldn't as... be able to tell you. Okay, you don't know what time you wake up, but no. you woke up. 
Yeah, right. At your parents' house where you live? Yes. What's your address? Um, you woke up there, you live with your parents? Right. Okay. Um, what did you do when you when you woke up? I went to the restroom. Okay. And I was in pain. I was up all night going, I was asleep and I go to the restroom and I, mm -hmm. just at all hours of the night, all day today. Okay. So what happened after you started going to the restroom? I just went back to sleep because I couldn't go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then after that? What did she do? What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, obviously... It was, it was repetitive, mm -hmm. and then um, my dad came, my dad went to the store and went and got me some pills, I don't even know what they were, but um, they were supposed to help me poop, and I took it, and I went back to sleep, and I stayed asleep for I don't even know how long. Okay. And then I woke up... And I just kept trying to use the restroom, and I'd go back to sleep, and I just repeated it, sir. Hmm. What happened after that? What do you mean? Mm -hmm. So obviously, I mean, you, you have no idea what happened. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, but like, I'm, I'm trying, I can't tell you if you, like, I'm not a very good explanation. Okay. Alexis is reluctant of detailing the events that led to her decision. So, the detective takes a more direct approach. When observing Alexis's behavior, Alexis also fails to display genuine remorse, which can also be attributed to a form of detachment from reality. Dr. Susan Cave, a clinical psychologist, would later testify upon further analysis. She was able to confidently diagnose Alexis with being moderately impaired for attention, as well as bipolar 1 disorder. I gave her that test and I found something that's very interesting and I think it's key to understanding what happened here and that is that she is moderately impaired for attention almost like a child with attention deficit disorder Dr. Almost, Cave, yes. you need to answer the question that's asked and I think you've already answered it you may ask your next okay. question so um so obviously you gave birth to a child. Right. We're, I'm trying to find out where it happened, how it happened, or what led to that and stuff like that. Uh, um, I I went to sleep and then I woke up and I went to the restroom and I was just trying and then um, it it came out and I thought it was poop and then it, it wasn't. Okay. So you were where? In your at your house? Yeah, I was okay. by myself. You were by yourself? Yes. Okay. I mean, I mean, that's that's not normal, right? Right. Okay, what happened after that? I, I was in a panic. I didn't know what to do. Okay. I was scared. Okay. What did you do after? I, I, I cleaned myself, and I just it, it just left it where it was, and I was scared, and I was trying to call my mom, but I couldn't because I was so scared. I was like, I think she's going to hate me. Okay. Just, what made you think that? Just because I just turned 18. I haven't been, been 18 for a month. And I'm the baby. Right. I understand. That's, that's a lot to take, okay? And that's why I'm here getting your side of the story. Um, you're home alone, or who was no, that? I was by myself. You were by yourself? Okay, and this happened where? In the and restroom? Your restroom? Yeah. You guys have separate restrooms? Yeah. No, there's one restroom. There's one restroom? Okay. What did you do after the fact? What or mean? what happened? I mean, obviously. Like I was, I was, I was just cleaning. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. Okay. And I just wrapped it in a in a in a towel. Okay. Um. Did you ever thought of contacting, you know, an ambulance, a fire no, department, go out there and no, check I you did, out? I didn't do that. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, scared of what exactly? The, the baby, I just, like it was in nowhere. Right, but you're telling me that you knew yesterday, right? Yeah, but I didn't know it was, I didn't know how, and I didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. I knew, but I didn't like know where it was coming today. Right. Alexis now admits to knowing but didn't know it was coming today. This would serve as a quite controversial moment during trial, as the real question remained. 
Did Alexis discard her newborn spontaneously as she proclaims? Or did she deliberately plan and premeditate her actions to get rid of her own child? So it was unexpected. Right. You weren't expecting it to happen. No. Did you contact anybody? No. Okay, you said you didn't contact your mom? No, I tried, but I, was, I couldn't. I was scared. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a difference between being scared. I mean, I understand you're young. You don't know, obviously. But if you both you and I know that I mean, pregnancies, you know, they're they're pretty obvious. Your stomach starts growing. You know, you got se several different symptoms and stuff like that. I didn't know nothing. I, right. I didn't have nothing. I okay. Just, I was gaining weight. I was eating more. I was nothing. Nothing changed. Mm -hmm. So you're in the restroom. You give birth. You wrap it into a towel. What is that? Your towel? What color towel? Uh, I don't even remember, mm -hmm. to be honest. Okay. So what was your next? Item? What What else you do after that? I I just left and I drove around, and and I just put it to where I put it. Okay. Where are we talking about? Put what it where. I mean, obviously, I know where you went, and you didn't put... <laughs> right, like, I had the trash bag in the car. Okay. If you couldn't tell, the car is messy. Mm hmm But I, I, I put it, I did. So... And then I I, I put it in, I put it in the bag, I took it to the car, I... When I was in the car, I put, I had two trash bags. Okay. I took one with me, which is the one that I had, mm -hmm. and then I, I put it again, and then I was, I, I drove around, and I didn't know what to do, and I just put it in there. Okay. Where did you go? What do you mean? Where did you drive to? J.C. Penney's. I just didn't, I lived, that, I was in that area. I was, I live in that area. Mm -hmm. So where did you... Or did you throw the garbage bag? In the trash. In the trash? Okay, did you lock it up? Did you seal it up? With the, the hair tie. I'm sorry? With the hair tie. With the hair tie? But I, I don't even think it stuck because it was broke. Okay. So or you I just, was on the verge of breaking. Okay, were you by yourself in the car? I was by myself the whole time. Okay. You never notified anybody? No. Okay. So you grabbed your hair tie and just wrapped it around the bag? Yeah. Both bags? Or? No, just, well, I guess, yeah. What color was the bag? Black. The black bag? So you put the hair tie around the black bag? All right. So... I don't even think it stayed, to be honest. I, it, like I said, it was broke. Like mm -hmm. it was on the verge of breaking. All right, did you place it there? Did you throw it there? What did you do? I just, what do you mean? I mean, the like trash in the can trash, be, I just put it when I tossed it in. A normal trash can, like one of those that they pick up, the city picks up, or a bigger trash can, or what? The bigger trash can, I mean. Well, what kind of trash can were we talking about? Like There's different. The, the bigger ones, I guess. Okay. What color was the trash can? Green. Weren't they all green? So you just went and placed it inside or outside? Or? Inside. Alrighty. Um. Alexis mentions that she used a hair tie to close the trash bag, but is persistent that it was broken. This is yet another inclination of Alexis hoping for leniency, which she will not receive from the detective. Detective Perez would later testify during trial that the hair tie Alexis claimed she had used was never recovered. Let's talk about the tie that she put on it. She said she put a hair tie on it. She told you that, correct? She did correct. So you were the one in charge of this entire investigation. Did you find the hair tie? Well, we did not locate a hair tie. You did not locate it on the bed that where the baby was found? We did not. What about in the rest of that dumpster? Was it in there? No, not that we could tell. That's you couldn't tell. But it was not on that bag. It was not inside the bag or on the bag. So she said, I put a hair tie in. I don't think it stayed. Right. It broke. That I don't know. She said she thought it broke. I, I can't. I can't testify to something that I did not witness. I don't know if it broke or if it didn't. Okay. We're talking about what you testified to, which is everything she told you pretty much, right? right. That was her statement to me, yes. That was her statement to you. Okay. And um, you don't have any information to the contrary, do you? Correct. Okay. 
The detective then catechized if she was fully aware of the repercussions of her decision and tries once again to understand but fails to find any sort of logical reasoning. So, obviously, you're 18 years of age, you know right yeah. from wrong, right? Right. Okay, so you wrap around a newborn inside a trash in bag. In panic. I, I'm, right. I just turned 18. Right, right. It's not like I've been 18 forever. Exactly, but you know, I mean, if somebody were to wrap you inside a trash can and put a tie on it, and you're not able to move... Well, the tie was broke. Like, I, right. could, I would be able to stick my hand in there. What do you think would have happened? What do you mean? So what do you think would have happened? You never notified law enforcement. You never called for EMS. You I never... didn't. And by the end, I'm still angry. Mm -hmm. what, what exactly, what do you think was going to happen? I don't know. You don't know what would have happened? Well, I mean, obviously I know, but... Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm in a panic. I, I don't... I, there's a baby in front of me. I just... Okay. Do you never notify your mom? Never. No, you never notified anybody? Nobody. Okay, so... It's not, you know, it's not... Normal behavior from any reasonable person to do what you did. If I'm... What you know, do you mean? It's not... In a panic when I just turned 18? Right. It still isn't, though. We're talking about a baby. Well, I know, I know what you mean, but like... I'm, I get what you mean. Okay. Let me take a small break, okay? I'll be right back. Can my mom come in here when you're calling? Um, well, you're 18, you're of age, okay? Yeah, so, I know. unless you were juvenile, then that would change things. But give me just a minute, I'll be right back. Not even while you're out of the room? Let me see what I can do, okay? Not only does Alexis admit knowing what would happen had the child remained in the dumpster, but also admits to keeping it a secret, essentially telling the detective she had abandoned the child to succumb to the harsh environment. The detective reminds Alexis that she is an adult and capable of differentiating right from wrong, although the rational part of a teenager's brain isn't fully developed and won't be until the age 25. The detective decides to step out momentarily to acquire any follow-up questions he may need to ask. He returns with a more specific line of questioning, looking to elaborate further on times and locations as well as her whereabouts the night of. Alright, um, back to where we left off. Um, I appreciate you, you know, being telling me what happened and stuff. What did you do after the fact? I know. What time more or less was it? Do you remember? Do you recall? Mm -hmm. Like 2.15 maybe? Somewhere around that time. Okay. That's when you dropped off the baby? Somewhere, I believe so, okay. yeah. What did you do after the fact? I drove around. I continued to drive around. Continued to drive around? To do what? To just, I don't know, just to clear my, to, to figure out what to do. Okay. What else? I mean, where'd you go? Where'd you end up going? Where did you do? I ended up going to my house. You ended up going to your house. What did you do after? Dude, when I went to my yeah. house, I just sat on my bed and I was trying to figure out okay. what what I was supposed to do or what I what, what to do. At any point, did you make anybody aware of it? No, I was still in shock. Okay, nobody found out. Nobody knew about it. Okay, were your parents back home at the time? You were home alone. Okay. Did you seek any medical attention or no? Did you think about, you know, what could have happened or what, you know, could end up happening to the baby? Yeah. Okay. My mom said it was in love, but is it okay? Okay. Um, <clears throat> they'll be briefing me here as we go. So last I heard, the baby's okay. Okay. So did you ever... Did it ever cross your mind to let anybody know, contact law enforcement, you know, go back? I don't know. Okay. I was still, I'm still in shock the whole time when my parents got home. They, they, they just didn't tell them I was still in shock. I was just mm -hmm. in my room. You're in your room? Okay. You, did you ever leave the home afterwards? Did you go anywhere? No. 
Did you talk to your parents when they got home? Yeah, eventually, but I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. So your parents had no knowledge? No knowledge, absolutely not. And what if I were to tell you that they did have knowledge? What do they, you mean? they told me they didn't know about it. What, what would you say then? How? Because I didn't even know. Okay. You didn't know, but yesterday you found out? I mean, what do you mean? Because I feel like we're talking about two different things, and it's not going well. We're talking about a baby that was thrown in the trash like or garbage, yes. right? And it's a human being. That's well, what we're talking about. When I, my knowledge is when they found out was when the officer showed up at my house. Okay, so I'm talking about the knowledge of you being pregnant, obviously. Oh. Because I know that you knew back when you found out you were pregnant. And I found it, out. And it wasn't yesterday. It's, That's I what I know. To God it okay, I, I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't go that route, but I know. And I do my investigation prior to even talking to you and, you know, I'm coming sure. out here and interviewing you. Okay, yeah. as I told you, I don't, I don't, I'm not here to judge you. There's right. two sides to the story, yeah. but if you're going to come and tell me that you found out you were pregnant yesterday, and I know that's a lie. Why? Well, sorry. Could go you ahead. Mean, no, go ahead. Then cha it changes things because I don't, I don't <clears throat> appreciate that. Right. I found out I was pregnant yesterday. Okay. Because I heard it. The doctor showed me. I knew back in whenever. But I didn't know. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, oh, it's whatever. So you knew back whenever, when is this? What are we talking about? Back in... August. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit before that. All right. So, yesterday, whenever you went to the doctor, how far along did they tell you you were? They didn't say. They didn't tell you? No. Okay. So... That's how I didn't know it was coming today. Mm hmm All right. So, obviously, I'm not a girl. I'm a guy. Right. But I, I know women have menstrual periods. So, how can you not know... I had my menstrual period every month. Okay. So, that never changed? Never. So, but you knew back in August? I... Well, I took two. One was positive, one was negative. I took the negative. I didn't. Okay. What about, you know, as far as you beginning weight, any movement, any anything like that? No, sir. Okay. Alexis claims she had taken two pregnancy tests to which one was positive and one was negative. She would later testify on trial that she was simply following a trend on TikTok. Alexis also claims she continued to menstruate while she was pregnant. This is biologically impossible. The detective now begins to uncover discrete information that gives us insight in Alexis's unstable mindset. He also begins inquiring into the father and questions whether or not he had any influence in her decision. So, um, back in June, you had an incident, uh, I guess you ran away from home? Were you having... I, I guess you could say ran away. Okay, was it a result of this? And no, you were you having no. problems with... It was a completely different matter. Okay. So is this the father of your baby, the person you were, ha or you were having issues with? Or you were sending mm -hmm. messages to your mom, suicidal messages, saying that you were going to be with God and cops were called out to your address oh. in June. Does it, you know, does this have to do, to me, it obviously... It, it has nothing to do with him, absolutely okay. nothing. This is not the person that is I, responsible I, for your baby, or... I, I know this is a lot of questions I'm asking, <laughs> right. I'm just trying to figure out, like no, I said, I'm not curious. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's not a result of this. He had nothing to do, like, it was... Right, so it's it's not him. Is there somebody we need to talk to? I mean, did he do something to you? No, 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 That would didn't, cause, no. that would lead to this? No, no, did no. He, did he know? No. Okay, but you do know who is the father of the baby. Yes. Okay, but he yeah. didn't. Yeah. Okay. Do you mind sharing his name? Yes, sir. How do you spell the last name? Do you happen to know his date of birth by chance? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Sorry. Do you, know, do you know more or less how old he is? He's 16. 17. 
Yeah. Y'all dated for how long? Uh, about a year and a half. Okay. So I'm assuming you met in school? Yes. Do you mind me asking what happened or what did y'all break up? We we broke up. We just wasn't working out. Okay. When did y'all break up? When? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't even remember. You don't remember? More or less? A year ago? About August, I think. Around August? Yeah. Sometime when, like, the beginning of school. Okay. So you said things weren't working out? Yeah. So obviously if you know enough for you to tell me that he's obviously the father of your child, you should have known when you got pregnant, right? <laughs> Honestly, not really. Not really. But you, you're able to tell me who it is, so... You know, well, he was the only one I've ever been with. A reasonable person would say that you knew when you got pregnant. Not, with all due respect, not necessarily. No. Because, I mean... Okay. So, I'm just, you know, yeah, I know you give me information, obviously, but he didn't right. do anything as far as to lead you to do this? Did he? Nothing? Okay. After questioning Alexis about the father of her child, the detective then makes one last attempt of trying to understand her reasoning before reconciling. Alexis then states she is more than capable of taking care of her child as school and finances weren't a problem. This closing conversation would also be highlighted during trial as Alexis soon asks for custody of her child. Did you just think... Um you would be better off without a child because you're too young? No, I... I wait, mean, wait, sorry, go back to What do you mean? Um, what's, I'm trying to reason like as far as my, what... Like, what is, what is in my head? Or, like, what... what I'm trying to reason your actions. That's what I'm trying to find out. Oh. Get a reason behind your actions. I, I, I knew I was too young, but I knew I would be able to do... Like, I'm about to graduate school. Mm -hmm. School's not my worry. I have a stable job. I'm... Money's not <coughs> a worry for me, okay. um, so I would be able to. I, 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 if the baby's okay, I want it. Okay. What if I told you the baby was dead? What would change then? <sighs> Nothing. All right. What's a good form where we can reach you at? Um, five seven five. Mm -hmm. Can I? Would I be able to give you my mom's number, or do I have to give you mine since I'm over the age? Um, your phone number. Yeah, your stuff. Three one eight. All right. And again, I'm gonna ask you: Do you need any medical? I know you. I mean. You gave birth, obviously. It's right. not something normal. It's not something I mean, you do every day. Do you need us to call an ambulance out here? I mean, my my word is your well-being. Yeah, no, obviously. I know. Um, I don't feel the need, but I. I, I mean, you're 18 years of age. Right. If um, anything, you can you can at least get checked out. And it's up to you. Would my mom be able to take me? Um. Yeah, that's completely up to you. I mean, I'm just asking you right now if you need somebody to come check you out. Well, I prefer not here. Okay. But, so maybe my mom could take me somewhere. Okay. Perfect. Um, let me just take one last break and I'll be right back, okay? And my mom still can't come in here. Um, like I said, you... Wait, you not might, you're point. not in here. All right, I understand. Let me go, let me go talk to you. Good. Um, your mom is in number two. I don't know if you want to go in there. My officers will come get you in number two, okay? Sure. Okay. Right, 
the jury would find Alexis guilty of child abuse and attempted first degree murder. Judge William Shoebridge would sentence her to 16 years in prison, where she will be 34 years of age when she is released. As for the infant, the child would make a full recovery and now in the father's custody.